So, today I got Compass with me and uh, we are at the workshop and we have the little Kubota fresh in from the basement job. Haven't seen that video, link up there-ish. And man, this Kubota is starting to get old and worn out. But everything is fixable. Uh, so today I just checked the price for all the bolts and bushings and everything for the whole excavation part and it's around 16,000 crowns or $1,500 so it's not too bad actually and the job of changing out everything is not too bad neither but it's also got a leaky radi radiator and it's got a hydraulic leak the hydraulic leak is just a hose that goes to this piston here so it's just changing that out should be easy enough radiator I probably could solder and fix it it's 6,000 crowns for a new radiator or about $580. Uh, but the question is, we are using this machine not that much, but it's being rented out a bit. And yeah, now when it's starting to get old, is it worth it to keep fixing it? Or should I just sell it as is or fix it and sell it as is and buy a new one? Or yeah, I don't know yet, but the worst part is and this we just noticed no when we got in so luckily it didn't happen out on the job but check this out so we got a big tear right here on the stick so this part the quick connector here the bolt is broken because it's pointing out and this is on its way going all the way so it's not much holding it it's cracked all the way here so it's only on the, only here it's holding now so yeah I mean, man, 3,000 hours this one got, so it's a lot. But uh, let's take everything apart here and just have a look at it. How hard will it be to fix? Compass is enjoying the new workshop. It's room enough for throwing stuff in here. <laughs> look how sloppy it is now. But of course, with the broken bolts and everything, it's really... It, it's not tight. This one was in one piece. Let's see about this one. Nope, not so much. Oh, the point of not being greased in has passed. Right, here it is washed off and what you could I, I don't know if the camera had the hose hit it so I don't know if it caught, caught it but when I was uh, pressure washing this the, the, <laughs> the bushing that was in this place just fall out did fall out 
and you can see the bushing that is supposed to be on the other side is in the middle and all loose so yeah so the seal is there this is the dust seal so it has escaped in so that's probably what have done this and that is that this seal has gone in and this seal has been too roomy and yeah, you can see these ones are not possible to move that's how it's supposed to be and uh, then it have teared up everything from down under here all the way up here and here it's not long before it's off and all the way down started to crack this way and underneath the crack has started so this was uh, really close to a total failure so we caught it in time let's see if we can fix it all right game plan is as follow i will cut off the rest in the middle here so we'll release the tension because you can see it's warped a little bit this way now and with that we can make sure that we get this part all the way into here and the same on this side then we know that this is And of course, I was out of gas on my heater, so couldn't heat it up. So then we have to continue tomorrow, see if we can get this back together. And uh, yeah, I think we weld this back together and uh, order in all um, the bushings and all the bolts for all the way here. And then we'll have almost a new machine. This slack, I have tried to take away the one moving the whole thing that's not possible there was no adjustment right maybe i've come up with a better plan for this maybe i will take the whole stick off and just take it in the press and press everything back together much easier and more controlled to get everything where i want it and it's only three bolts and some hydraulic houses and it should be loose and this one is no problem to carry by yourself so uh, and if I buy all the bolts, everything is out anyways. So let's do that. So, all the stick is off, and I've just put the uh, ram back so and connected it so we can move it around still without any problems. And uh, yeah, we'll pull everything else apart as well. So, next is just to take the boom off and the uh, rams and everything so everything is ready for new bolts and uh, stuff like that. But I also need to fix the radiator. So, you can see here it's leaking a bit and uh, just have to take it off and try and pressure test it and see where it's leak and solder it you can see here probably someone had a bush or something stick coming in there when turning around sometime so it's it's not good to say where it's leaking but it, it doesn't seem to be very good secured but you have to figure that one out but before we do that we have to move the machine to some space where it can be standing Right now, uh, Pereric has his snowmobile in here and 
I got a snowmobile in here and stuff like that. So we are in the middle of rearranging everything. Check this guy out. This is just so awesome. All right, I got the press down here. So now it's time to find one way or another to make this go back together again. So all the new bolts and bushings are on its way. So we just need this fixed before everything gets here and then we can finish it off. But I just tried a little bit now off camera and you can see if I press here, it's just lifting that end. So what I will do is just take the Belco and put the bucket on top here and yeah, hopefully that will do it. I don't think it's that much that won't, will put it together, but a little bit pressure we need. Attempt one did not work. Now the press is just tipping, so need to figure out something else. It's not every day the brain is keeping up with what I'm thinking or my plans. <laughs> this, this seems like a perfectly good idea in my head in the beginning until I started applying pressure. Can you see what's the problem? What is the problem? Yep. I'm just lifting the press because <laughs> the arm is on, <laughs> on the floor. So, <sighs> oh well. the oldest securing strap I had probably <laughs> but we are at a couple of tons and I can hear something is crackling around so I should probably went with a five ton but what I'm trying to do now is uh, to straighten it up you can see this outer part is tilting a little bit this way uh, according to the rest so I'm trying to straighten it up but let's see what goes first uh, you can see the cracks are totally gone now so this working pretty good for that on both sides a little bit more on this side but I'm pushing everything here and you can see it's cracking there So we have about 10 tons on it now, uh, <laughs> crack is totally gone, that's one thing, uh, but the problem is they are misaligned, uh, let me see if I can show you. So if you can pull the line there, you can see this one is tilting a little bit this way and this one is straight right here. So this needs to be more like this. And I think I have to flip it around and try to push it the other way. But I'm starting to think that the easiest thing is to just cut everything almost totally off. I have now measured the distance here and it's 41 millimeters. So if I cut everything almost all the way off, I can just put it wherever I want it, tack it together and then weld it. I think that will be easier than trying to push everything in place. Then I can just 
yeah, I don't know. And I will make, as I mentioned earlier, some uh, new plates over everything here, just to make everything a little bit stronger. So let's get it out of this one again and take a look at it. cut everything off, weld it in place again, just like I want it. Because this can take forever, and check out the marks from the wrench here, wow. Still not perfect, so that's the better solution, I think. Then we can grind and bevel everything and make it ready for tacking. Right, got it off, finally, it was a double plate, so there is one plate in the middle also, bracing between the two pipes, and uh, yeah, now it's just getting everything lined up and uh, start welding, I guess, prepare for weld. Just make this, so I will cut off a little bit more of this one so I can get in there and weld this also together. I think we have it pretty much aligned now, so I will start just tacking all the corners together so we can move around, tack the plate that are inside here and just make sure that everything is as level as I can get it. Uh, it's mostly eyeballing it, so yeah. But I could see you know, when I was grinding that there was rust all the way around the cracks and everything, so this has been going on for quite some time I guess. So. We didn't catch it before it was almost too late, but right before it was too late. We managed to finish the job before we saw it. <laughs> it would have been too bad if we saw it before because then the job probably would have stopped. But yeah, here we are, ready for welding pretty soon. And uh, then we are just waiting still for the bolts and bushings to come in for the little Kubota, but hopefully it's here soon. So uh, yeah, weld the result and uh, you can see I'm using the caliper as a straight edge here so with the magnet under this one is actually magnetic so it's sticking and 
looks like we are pretty good here so i'll just fiddle a little bit more around and then we'll start welding this together We are at 41.4 and here we are 41.9. Wow, just a small little taboo. Looks good. Doesn't line up perfectly on this side because this one is a couple of millimeters shorter, I think it was. I measured them earlier. But the alignment looks good. Right, one more tack. So I checked it over and under and here and there and it looks pretty great so I think we will just start welding it but I could actually see that it has started to crack. Let's see if I can get some light on it. So I don't know if you can manage to see it on the camera but okay, you should see it on the camera. Yeah you can see the crack going around here. So this pipe so the whole thing was coming apart actually. So we need to weld a little bit in here also, so I have to grind off this. But first I will secure by welding here and on the other side. So this is the plate in, and then we have to fill it in here afterwards. So I got the stick welder out. Stick welder is better, uh, more heat, more penetration than my little MIG. But my little MIG does everything. It does the stick welding, and it does the TIG, and it does the MIG. So that's pretty great, but welding is, yeah, let's just go ahead. Looks pretty good, I think. So happy with that. May still work when, while we're welding, but hopefully not. So I will build it up a little bit more in here, a little bit more this way, just to make it even stronger. But yeah, now it's just a bit of welding, checking now and then that it doesn't warp. So let's see, are we still good? Yep, look perfectly aligned. And yes, nice. Right. 
made one more pass in here, checked everywhere. It, it's a while ago because I had to charge the camera. Uh, so everything looks straight. It looks, yeah, looks good. So uh, yeah, as you can see, it's flush both up and down. It is flush. So, and if you are in a line, it looks good. So yeah, and it's welded now all the way around so now it's just grind a little bit here to get this welded again and uh, yeah just continue welding Alright, I went out and got myself some 4mm steel that I can make reinforcements for this one. So we make sure it will hold for 4000 new hours, 1000 more than it had. But for making reinforcements on the excavator arms, it's important that you don't make one straight line over. So if we take a look at the reinforcements we have here, yeah, for example here on the Terex, you can see they have made this V shape and that's for putting the stress in a lot more area than just straight over. If straight over you would probably have it cracking straight over. So you can see they have done the same down here as well and this one yeah you can see it's beveled like this same here in a arc here and this one not straight over so that's important so we will do the same for this one yeah same for the case so let's just measure the width of the arm and make one long cut here and i will try and wrap it around the pipe on the end just to make it even stronger grinded off the welds so everything is flat-ish and level and uh, yeah took away the paint so plan is now to 
put this on here and weld it on and try and see if we can loop it around this part so we can get it going all the way and under and up here again and I'm thinking I will do the same as on the Terex here just make a V for welding it on for placing the stress a little bit more around and we still need to make a few small parts down there just for filling in these holes but else it's welded I would guess this would hold really good as, as we saw in the beginning the reason for this as I think is because of the bushing in here that had shifted to the middle so there was no uh, no bushing in out in the end so it had had all the stress on one side so we will make sure the bushings are sitting correctly this time or secured but okay let's make a V on this and uh, keep on welding So I have no idea if this will work, but I'm just winging it, and uh, you are along for the ride. There we have it, then it's all the way around, didn't hit the center perfectly after rounding it around here, but I figured that would happen, but it's not a dresser, it's just for making it stronger, not prettier. So now I'll just weld everything to secure it to this, and uh, yeah, then we have some small parts in here to fill in, and uh, it's mostly done. just made a small metal piece just to put in between here where the hole is so you see we have a hole straight through so with that little piece it will make life a lot easier welding here it is completely welded together still a little bit hot but not much so now it's time to grind 
just a little bit just to take the worst edges off and everything so it's ready for paint when that time comes we'll probably just uh, put some uh, primer on it I think that would be nice so it won't rust or anything but I think this will be stronger than it ever was and, uh, yeah you can see I did the V shape on the top and the uh, other shape on the bottom so uh, yeah actually nice and easy job not much work hopefully this will not make any trouble with this being bigger but I think it will be okay but let's grind it down and take a look again Right, there it is, ready for paint, and uh, yeah, turned out pretty great, I think. Uh, I'm happy with it. Got a big blob of weld here for the holes there were there, but yeah. as mentioned, this is not for making it pretty, it's just for making it hold. So there is a small pinhole there, but I think that's the only one I've seen, so could probably just give it a little bit there but yeah doesn't matter just for not letting water in under this plate I'm thinking it's better if it's completely sealed ish so for the rest of this little machine it's uh, changing out all the bushings and pins and everything but that will be a separate video and then the installment of this one again will be in that video So getting the old bushings out is actually going way over my expectations. I thought...